You know what happened to Sabah in the last few days, don't you? There was yet another attempt at taking over of the Sabah state government. I want to speak about a national pandemic and that is not about the COVID-19. There has been a proliferation of amphibian love calls. It's an illness that used to affect Sabahans and then the politicians in Perak became afflicted with it. The illness of frogs has become a national pandemic. It spread to a hotel in PJ, Sheraton. We all know what happened there as well. None of these matter. I want to speak to you about what's called a coffee shop analogy. In early 2008, a guy called Peter Yu wrote that party hopping should be made illegal and he used what is called a coffee shop analogy. You feel like a cup of coffee. Which shop do you go to? Well, the one with the most number of patrons. So this is called the winning syndrome. He asks, had you known your candidate would change sides, would you have voted him in? That's a good question. When Tan Sri Mohidin Yasin abandoned the Amno ship, his political colleagues called him a rodent. Yet blindly, like the rats following the pipe piper, they too fell over the cliff along with the piper. Now at sea, they cast about wildly, limpet-like. They latch on to anything or anybody. And sadly, Tan Sri Mohidin Yasin would repeat this in February of this year, 2020. Why did you vote in your candidate? Ask yourself this question. There are a hundred reasons. Don't give us this high faluting story about king and country. That was before. During their campaigns, they make all sorts of promises. They guarantee positive changes. They assure us that they will act in our best interest. The election comes. The moment they win, they fall prey to what? The highest bidder. In 1994, Byron Kitingan faced an Olympian struggle with the Barisan National, the then ruling party. It had been in power for 60 odd years with the help of Tun Datu Haji Mustafa Harun. He secured a wafer thin two seat majority. Fearful of defections, he besieged the governor's gates for 36 hours. Eventually, the gate swung open and he was allowed entry. Byron formed the government. Weeks later, croaking was heard everywhere. There was an amphibian migration to Amno in Barisan National. What happened next is well known. In those days, the temptations were of a material kind. What happened after the general elections, the 14th general election, is not the same. It is the need for the winner syndrome. We go to the next point. Elected representatives who suffer from what I call selective amnesia. Party hoppers should not be allowed to represent the people. And so it is time we bring in a new law that declares once a person jumps party, his or her seat falls vacant. Can it be done? Well, Klantan tried to ban party hopping. The courts held that that was unconstitutional. Surprising, isn't it? This was because, the court said, of Article 10 of the Malaysian Federal Constitution, which allows every person, including our salamander politicians, freedom of association. This meant they could hop from one party to another with impunity and abandon. Now let's deal with Article 10. This is what Article 10 says. All citizens have the right to form associations. And then in subparagraph 2 it says, Parliament may from time to time impose on the right conferred by paragraph C, the right of association, restrictions as it deems an expedience in the interest of public order or morality. And there you have it. Quite plainly, Parliament can pass a law in the interest of morality in restricting the right to hop. Some experts disagree with this view. They point to a 1992 Supreme Court case. It's called the Nodin case. I'll tell you what happened in 1992. It's an interesting story. In 1992, two members of the Islamic party or PAS Having won the state seat in Klantan for the Klantan State Legislative Assembly resigned from pass. They became members of, surprise, surprise, Barisan National. Nordin Saleh was won. The Klantan State Legislative Assembly was outraged. It passed a resolution vacating his seat. This was because, ruled the assembly, Nordin had resigned from a party from which he had been elected. Therefore, the assembly declared, Nordin had ceased to be a member of the state legislative assembly. So, Nordin's seat was declared vacant. 
No, didn't, didn't sit still. He took the assembly to court. And guess what? The court agreed with the state assembly. The high court judge held that despite the constitutional right of freedom of association, the state assembly could declare Nordin seat vacant. Well, Nordin appealed to the Supreme Court. It reversed the high court's ruling. The Supreme Court ruled that Nordin had the constitutional freedom to hop. Since then, the Nordin case has become a charter for every party hopper. All frogs sing his song. So, the next question you should ask is, does the constitution need to be amended to enact anti-hopping laws? That's what we've been hearing, haven't we? Is that right? I think a number of things are wrong with this view. First, the Supreme Court's decision in the Nordin case did not say that parliament cannot enact laws to restrict the right to hop from party to party. Our Supreme Court judges were not asked that question. Had they been asked, they would have said Parliament could do it. Second, the Nordin case only dealt with what the Klantan State Assembly had done. The Supreme Court decision could be right because there it was the State Assembly that had passed a resolution banning party hopping, not Parliament. Third, in Nordin's case, unlike Article 10, the Parliament itself had not imposed any such restriction by an act of parliament, nor had the Klantan assembly passed any enactment. There is a fourth reason, and that is that the federal constitution openly allows parliament to impose such a restriction in the interest of public order or morality. How can that provision in the constitution be wrong? Why do we need to amend the constitution? It's right there. Now, I am taking the position that party hopping is unethical. A man who hops parties breaks promises. He breaks his voters' trust. So he acts against morality. So such a law can be passed without breaching the constitution. And there is one final reason. It has to do with the state assembly of another country, that of Jammu and Kashmir in India. India's constitution has a provision in Article 19. The Indian Article 19 deals with the person's right of association or freedom of association. It also allows, surprisingly, for the making of laws to restrict party hopping. That is almost identical to our Article 10. Imagine that. A Nordin-like thing occurred there, except that Jammu and Kashmir did have a state act. That act banned party hopping. It was in section 24 capital G of the Representation of the People's Act. If you hopped, that act said you were disqualified from sitting as an elected member of the state legislative assembly. Mian Bashe was a member of the National Conference Party. In 1977, at an election, his party won the state election and formed the government. Then Mian Bashe did the unthinkable. He resigned from the National Conference Party and he joined the opposing party, the Congress I party. What was to become of the seat he occupied in the state assembly? The stalwarts from his former party demanded that he be disqualified from holding a seat in the state assembly. They pointed to the anti-hopping act. They argued that under that act, Mian Bashe had been disqualified. Wisely, the speaker, instead of making a ruling, referred the dispute to the court. And Mian Bashe himself did not sit on his haunches. He himself filed a court action. He asked the court to declare that Section 24G of the Act had violated his constitutionally entrenched right to associate with whomsoever he liked. The Supreme Court of India thought long and hard about it and eventually ruled that the Anti-Hopping Act did not violate Mian Bashe's right to freedom of association. This was because Almost exactly like Malaysia, India had a restriction clause in Article 10, Paragraph 2, Subparagraph C. India had also placed a limitation to the right of association in its Article 19, Subparagraph 4. That was that for Mian Bashe. His seat became vacant and he had to vacate it. What's interesting is what the judges said. It's terribly interesting. In making his ruling in that case, the acting Chief Justice of India said that in upholding the validity of the Act, the anti hopping Act, he had placed great stress upon the post-independence history of prevalent political defections and their baneful effect in that they had threatened the functioning of parliamentary democracy. Imagine that. He said it had threatened in many parts of the Indian subcontinent. 
And then the Chief Justice emphasized that these political defections were not because of any genuine prodding of the conscience, but because of personal aggrandizement and rank opportunism and had thus become a pernicious form of political corruption threatening the functioning of parliamentary democracy. We can say that in Malaysia and the meaning wouldn't change. It was against the backdrop of these events, said he, that the impugned legislation had been enacted into law. He continued, viewed from this background, said he, the object of the section is not to curb dissent, but to eradicate the evil of political defections in the state. Do you know what our Supreme Court said in the Nordin case? Our Supreme Court said that the Mian Bashe case did not apply in Malaysia. This cannot be right, in my opinion. Look at our constitution and in particular at Article 10, subparagraph 2. It gives parliament the right to enact laws to limit the right of association. If in the interest of public order or morality, the principle in Mian Bashe's case does apply in Malaysia. So what lessons can we learn from the Indian case of Mian Bashe? I hope our parliament and government will look at this closely. They must do it. It's their moral duty. The reasoning of the Indian Supreme Court judges is clear. When you sit as an MP or a state assemblyman, you are not merely exercising your personal rights. You are exercising the rights on behalf of the voters who had entrusted you with this mandate. The law will stop in, said the judges, or should step in to uphold the wishes of one's constituents. What's wrong with that? It's time our parliament enacts a new law. One that declares, number one, once a person jumps party after succeeding in an election, his or her seat must immediately fall vacant. Number two, all the expenditure of re-election of the jumping candidate and his constituency must be borne by him personally. Number three, he cannot for a period, say 10 years, stand for election. Number four, he cannot accept any public or private position of responsibility after that. Surely the people of Malaysia deserve better than amphibians as our representatives. What do you think? If you liked this video, please press like, Please subscribe if you haven't already, share this video widely, ring that bell and write a letter to your MPs and say, don't hop parties, better you resign. We will elect somebody else in your place, somebody whom we can trust and who will do what we tell him or her to do. Don't you agree? Thank you very much. I'll see you again with another constitutional issue soon. Goodbye. <music>